Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for checking out another video. Uh, we finally got something other than a brick job. Uh, I feel like sometimes I feel like that's all I ever do, which is nice, but it's nice to get some other work and pull the scanner out sometime, sometimes. Um, today we have a 97 GMC Sierra 2500 5.7, um, 185,000 miles, which around here is a miracle. Um, truck's in relatively good shape. New customer. Yeah, new customer with a truck with an old truck with a lot of miles. Let's just try not to be the bearer of bad news again. But it came in for a coolant leak. And then when he dropped it off, he said, oh, by the way, he's got a power steering noise and the check engine light's on. So we move forward. Um, cool and leak, I'm not even going to elaborate on it. It's pretty simple. Quick pressure test. Right, he's got a hole in it. Pretty simple. Power steering fluid is low. There's a wet line down there. I'm going to clean it up. If it looks like something interesting, I'll film that for you guys also, but I doubt it. Uh, I just wanted to plug in for the check engine light. I Quick, I plugged in my little code reader just to, yeah, I even have a code reader. Um, and not everything has to be big and fancy. I plug in real quick just to kind of wrap my head around maybe where I'm going, um, get an idea of, of what I might be looking at. Um, I pulled two quick codes, uh, PO140 and a 117, 140 for the uh, rear row two sensor and the 117 for a coolant temp sensor. Coolant temp sensor voltage issue, the rear row two sensor was for inactivity. Um, this is, and I'll stop there because this is where you could get caught lighting up the parts cannon. Uh, this is also where if you like to bring your vehicle to one of these facilities, I won't mention names, that like to scan, one of these parts facilities that like to scan your car for free, nothing's free. Um, they will look at these things, they will go on their computer, which will tell them, well, and uh, historically, these codes mean you should throw, you should throw, and I mean, l or launch a O2 sensor at it, and a coolant temp sensor at it, which may or may not fix the problem. Um, so, I guess that was my little rant for the moment. Just don't get caught just because you got a twenty-five dollar code reader. And I know everybody wants to try to help themselves out, and I get it. It's not a crystal ball. And if I had a dime for every time somebody told me, hey, can't you just hook up that machine that tells you what's wrong with it? I wish I had one of those machines. I wish everybody did. Um, so take it for what it is, whether it's whether it's the a snap-on, an Autel, a launch, or even the o, OE tool, it puts you in a direction. And then it's up to you to know how to pull up the right data, analyze it, and make sense of it, and move forward. Although it's very tempting, I get it to well, oh, oh, two sensors, seventy-five bucks, a hundred bucks, whatever it is, one hundred and twenty-five, fifty. I'm just gonna buy it and launch, put it in, and it should be good. And you may get lucky. That's on you. I ain't doing that. Um, but that being said, um, point number two, and I'm gonna flip this around real quick to show you another issue with the code reader. This would be an issue with the code reader. I Like I said, I plugged in my little... Oh, man, terrible glare. Sorry. Let's see if I can fix that. How's that? Uh, a little better. Um, I got two codes from the code reader. I got a PO140 and 117. There is my 117. There's my 140. It did not tell me there was a PO125. It did not tell me there was a PO114 or a 724. I don't know why it didn't tell me that. I'm not going to question it. it. You know, I have this tool, so you know this is where I go forward. But just be careful if you if that's all you have. Just again, it's not a crystal ball. Not only it's not a crystal ball, it didn't even tell me everything that was wrong with it, or it didn't even tell I shouldn't say it. It didn't even tell me all of the codes that were in it. So that could lend you down a uh, lend you that could uh, he, make you head down a wrong path. So keep that in mind. We're going to go forward with this. Give me a minute to pull up some data, and I think. And here's another uh, fork in the road. Um, you'll be very say when you come to a fork in the road, take it. Uh, which one do we want to go with first? Um, I think I'm going to 
I think we're gonna just see if we can quickly check the O2 sensor. Maybe we'll head down that one first and then we'll back out to the, and we'll check the coolant temp sensor. So stand by, let me pull up some data and we'll, um, we'll see what we find. All right, um, I pulled up some co engine coolant data while I was at it. Maybe we'll get to see something on that at the same time. We're checking out the O2 sensors. Uh, I think it's interesting that the bank one sensor one is already showing a full rich condition while bank two sensor one is showing a full lean condition. Interesting. Um, this right here, that bank one sensor two, that's the, that's the one that the PO140 relates to. I'm um, sorry, I had brain fade there for a minute. And at 438 is usually, uh, that's like a, I want to say like a neutral, like a center, center line number, usually indicated by a, a disconnected O2 sensor. So we'll see if that moves at all. We'll start this thing up. It is an open loop. Um, I threw some water in the radiator and a little bit of power steering fluid in there just so we can get this going. Even starts up like an old truck. Initial reading obviously is going pretty rich. On startup, probably dumped a ton of fuel in there. Um, interesting that the bank two sensor two um, uh, oxygen sensor is. Reading rich, which I would expect, because again, it just started up, we're still in open loop. It's probably dumping a ton of fuel, but that bank one sensor two doesn't seem to be moving at all. So either, but it is moving, which would lend to the idea that it's not disconnected, but it is very possibly just not working. So we'll give this a second, and uh, hopefully this should go into closed loop in about a minute. While waiting for this thing to go into closed loop, I just wanted to also make a note. Engine coolant temp seems to be reading normal. Um, and the fuel trims are showing negative numbers, which would indicate a, a rich condition. But again, it's still in the open loop. Um, the criteria, I didn't, I, I looked it up. I, I, you know, I don't, I'm not going to go all the way back to it, but I'll let you know that um, for that code to set, the ECM is, is saying that with the intake air temperature at a relatively low temp, I want to say like under 112 degrees or something, that the engine coolant temp went over uh, 280, um, which would indicate something bad with the wiring of the sensor. I hate to think that with the radiator leak and that this guy possibly may have actually gotten the truck that hot. It's I guess it's not impossible. Gosh, I hope we didn't get it that hot. Um, but anyway, while we're talking, I went into closed loop. Uh, my front O2 sensors, I don't know if you guys can see that up here and here. They're switching beautifully. My fuel trims are still showing negative. Um, you know, I would, I would get that to, to confirm any any issue with that I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna overlook that at the minute because I really need want to you'd want to road test that um, to get those numbers to what could be considered reliable um, but just sitting here my o2 sensors my where is it my front my bank two sensor one bank one sensor one are switching up and up and over I should say up and over above and below the you know the midway to 450 mark so it's showing you a rich lean rich lean funny on these old on the old uh, setups here, they, they, actually have, they actually have cross counts, which is funny when I looked it up because we haven't seen that in a long time. But um, but again, here's our back O2 sensor, which is settling in somewhere around 400, and this one yet hasn't moved off that 430, 440 mark. Um, what we're probably going to have to do is go underneath, and we'll we'll pull pull the plug, and we'll. Make sure our wiring is good, and but it is moving. So again, this is going to lend to the idea that that O2 sensor may actually be faulty. But we will. What is it? Test, don't guess, right? So, and then we'll keep watching that coolant temp 
Uh, I'm going to try not to let it get too damn hot because I do have to do a radiator in it. Hang tight. All right, I know we said we were going to concentrate on the O2 sensor first, but I lied. Um, underneath the hood, I just wanted to, I guess we were pa I was passing by this, so let me take a quick look at the coolant temp sensor, which is like all the old GM setups and even most of the new ones. It's in the thermostat housing. Um, quick visual, which is always recommended. I thought it was pretty funny. I got my, my uh, it's supposed to be yellow. I don't know if it's supposed to be white and black. I think it's supposed to be yellow and black. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I got my white and black here, and I have two black here. So, and it looks like a pretty new piece of loom. So, I don't think I guess somebody's been in here already at some point. And you know what? The truck's 21 years old. I'm not too surprised. But, um, and there you go. Uh, and if I can zoom in on that just a little bit, at least they did a decent job. Heat shrink butt connectors, and it looks like a pretty solid connection. So what I will do is, I have the, whoa, whoa, okay, scanner's up. I got the, the cool temp sensor getting graphed, so we can check for any small dropouts. I should try to straighten that up a little bit, I'll make you guys dizzy. Doing a quick little. Oh, look at that. I can get you. Get the scanner. I, get, I think a scanner and the harness in at the same time. But I don't see anything. Like I said before, I really hope he didn't get the, the motor as hot as I think he did. Because, man, that would. Huh. That's going to make things. That's, that's going to be an additional phone call. nothing okay and you know real quick uh, it's an interesting point if there's a suspicion that a customer if you're doing it for somebody else if you're doing it for yourself even but more so if you uh, a DIY or even a, a professional stop and think for a second here if there's a possibility this guy got it that hot um, stop and have a talk with them before you go further hey by the way there's a chance you may not realize that you may have gotten this truck real hot we may put a radiator in this, fix the check engine light, fix the power steering, and you may have a head gasket leak. You may have done some pretty serious damage. Um, and there's, unfortunately, there's really no way to know until we fix it, right? Um, I mean, I guess we, we could start doing a leak down test. We could start doing some, some preliminaries. Um, so, I mean, y y you need to have that talk with your customer. Sit down and go, do you want me to start checking these things ahead of time before we go any further and generate other diagnostic charges? Or do we just drop a radiator on this thing? And um, and sometimes these things may not, again, depending on how, how hot he got it, it may not show up for some mileage, some weeks, time mileage, uh, you know, two, three, four weeks, a month. All of a sudden, you know, we're percolating. Um, think about it, stop, talk to the customer. This is what I found. This is what you need to be aware of. You know, he told me that he saw the gauge getting hot, but according to him, it never overheated. But if it was low on coolant, the coolant temp sensor is not going to read right. Make sense? All right, guys. Well, I come underneath. We're going to get set up to check the... Run a couple quick tests on the O2 sensor. We'll make sure it's got power on ground. Make sure the signals are going back to the... To the PCM um, that it can accurately read the O2 sensor, and uh, I just want to show you this real quick. I get on the oh, let me bang this around a little bit. Um, both sides run to both sides, the right and left bank run to the right side of the truck. After it comes, you see that pipe there comes across, comes back this way. That right there is our left side or bank one. Downstream O2, and if we go back a little further, there is our bank two, sensor two. Uh, and of course, first we do a visual, and that's a, here comes the spoil alert. I've already been under here, because like I said, I wanted to set it up first. And let's see if we can get this under here a little better. There you go. 
guys, can you guys see that up there? Haha, <laughs> get up there. This right here. That is an unplugged sensor. I went up there to grab it, and look at that. It's not even plugged in. Um, which is odd because the sensor was actually reading something. And I'm not sure I have an explanation for that. But I think what I'm going to need to do is get this clip off and see if we can see if it's even capable of plugging back in. It feels like the plug is actually broken. So we may have to try to figure this. Actually, we may wind up having to change the sensor just based on the plug issue. But let's see if we, what we can do. Stand by. Uh, let's see if we can get it in there. Guessing by those, let's see if we can get to zoom in a little bit. I'm guessing by the green and the cobwebs in there, this hasn't been plugged in for a while. What I failed to ask the customer was how long the check engine light's been on. But gauging by the nasties that are in there, I'm guessing this hasn't worked in a while and the check engine light's been on for a while. So, and the plug is broken, which is why it wasn't plugged in. So this is going to get a, an oxygen sensor, not because the oxygen sensor isn't working, but because it's broken. And then we'll, uh, we'll put the scanner back on it, make sure it's actually working, see if we get some monitors to clear. Alright, we're going to try this with the basic box end of a wrench, and hopefully I can actually get my wrench over the end of this. I'm not really worried about messing this up because it's getting changed anyway. Oh, it's not going to work. And this thing is rusted to death. What's the chance it actually comes loose? What do you think? <laughs> Slim and none. Alright. Let's try some other options. Alright. You do this for any length of time, we all know you want to collect a whole cool assortment of different oxygen sensor wrenches to reach in weird places and around certain things. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the end of this off. No, don't do it. Yep, I'm doing it. Move this light a little bit. Nope, ain't having it. Nope, if that don't do it. This one definitely gonna do it. We may need to bring in some heat. Bring in the heat. Bring in the heat. Phone. All right, we're gonna trim this all the way down. See if I can get a tool on here. There we go. Give this thing a little bit of a bend. All right, we're gonna give this thing a lot of a bend. Check this thing out. Ready? Don't take much. 30 seconds, 45 seconds maybe. See the thing's smoking already. If I was smart, I'd have the other tools ready. They're laying under me somewhere. And... 
Let's give that a shot. Yeah. Smoke is good. We like smoke. Smoke is just hot. I can feel the heat coming over that baby. Woo! Come on, get on there. Like I said, if I was smart, I'd have the tools ready. <clears throat> Come on. Oh boy. Maybe not. I think we need to go a little bit hotter. You know what I'm afraid of, right? I'll pull the threads right out with it. Out, get it hotter. Ooh, we got maybe something to glow now. Success. That baby is nice and warm. Like I said, let's just hope I don't pull the damn threads out with it. I mean, darn threads, darn. I say damn. No. No. Now we'll try this little wrench here. That don't look good. Well, let's see what it looks like. No, actually, the threads look all right. I think I might have just put the O2 sensor coming out. We'll chase that. Put a chaser on it and get the new one in. For those that don't know that uh, the tool I just used in that last uh, part there to get the O2 sensor out, that's the Mini Ductor. That's actually the newest one. I think that's the third version. It's called the Venom. I'll, uh, I'm going to actually do a product review on it because I've had it for a while now. And uh, I think I have it long enough to do an honest review on it. So if you want, check out my other videos. You'll see it. I'll, uh, I'll do a product review on that one. It's a pretty, pretty cool tool. Um, pretty simple. I'm just going to get the... I have a chase. The, uh, the spark plug cha spark pull plug hole chase works as well, but this this one I think was set up specifically for. I don't maybe I'm wrong. This isn't the one for the. I have a, an O2 sensor hole specific chaser, but you know what? It's, it's really just a, a spark plug. Same size as spark plug hole. The old big ones. And if I can get this in there, I'll be good. I think that's where the problem is going to be. Is getting this thing started. Oh. And yes, I'm laying on my back for this one. I do have the truck up on a lift, but only a little bit. It's got a load in the back of it. I'm a little un uneasy about sending it all the way up in the air. When in doubt, be safe. I don't feel like getting crushed today. That has got to be one of the most stubborn oxygen sensor holes that I've dealt with in a long time. But, success.
The only thing I'm missing is a little bit of lube on the end of that. All right. A little bit of never seize compound on there. And I think it would have been a quicker video if I actually did all the troubleshooting on it. And the sensor came right out. Instead, we got no troubleshooting and a lot of fighting. It just goes to show you, you never know what you're going to find on these things. And then people say, I don't understand, it's just an oxygen sensor. How long does it take to change? It comes right out, screw it right in, right? Well, it takes two minutes. That's when you hit them with the wrench. Just kidding, I don't hit anybody with the wrench. Okay, let's go back upstairs and plug this thing in. Now the front part. Try to plug this in one-handed. It really doesn't matter. I don't think I can get two hands up there anyway. Which is probably how this ended up screwed up in the first place. Oh, oh, oh sorry. That didn't go well. Yeah. Let's try this again. Right, guys I gotta put the camera down and try to do this I'll bring you back all right well I got it plugged back in it turned out there's a piece of the original plug from the O2 sensor stuck in the other side of the plug that's why I couldn't get it together and I also couldn't see it because it's jammed up above the transmission but uh rest assured it's in there it's in there tight that little, that little blue lock is in place and the harness is secure to go we're gonna it's all nice and tight nothing's hitting anything we're gonna go back upstairs we're gonna throw the scanner on it let's make sure that it's working like it's supposed to we will reset everything and what was the expression I heard Eric use today uh, flush it out the door something like that if I might have gotten that wrong sorry if I screwed that up Eric All right, we've logged back in. Um, I mean, it's pretty obvious. I, I didn't think we were gonna find anything but a positive repair, especially after finding that plug off. Um, I believe this is our sensor right here, Spank 1 Sensor 2. That's the one that was pretty inactive before. Um, you know, I guess I was hoping for a nice diagnostic video and the, uh, the obvious jumped out. Uh, and that's the way it goes sometimes, right? You know, sometimes that's the way it goes. You 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 you, you never go into uh, what's the lesson? Don't go into it assuming what you're going to find. I think it's uh, it's going to be oh I I know what that is. It's going to be this, and you I mean, and you get ahead of yourself and you wind up changing a part that it doesn't need because well I've seen this a thousand times. It's kind of like I guess getting an evap code and you say oh it's it's, it's got to be the vent solenoid. You know they're they're all you know, the Hyundai vent solenoid. They're all bad, and you get caught sticking your big foot in your mouth. I do it all the time. Um, so don't, I guess, sometimes keep it simple, stupid, right? Uh, stick to the basics, like we always say. Um, and, and that's really it. I, I, I apologize if I got off on a tangent. I do that a lot. Um, I ramble on. Uh, I, I, I see something and I go a different direction with the video, and I apologize for that. I was going to stick to just the O2 sensor. We wound up looking at the coolant temp sensor while we were walking around the truck, and then I got back underneath, and got interrupted a hundred times so I apologize uh, I just I guess I'm trying to keep the content interesting and it's real this is kind of how it happens and if I tell you I got interrupted a hundred times trying to do this one video it's real the phone rings I got people coming in I got all kinds of things going on but that's it uh, so even with all the interruptions 
make sure you, you know, if you're gonna leave, walk away, write something down so you, so you remember where you're at um, when you come back to the vehicle. You know, I, I'm like like a lot of guys. I'm by myself. There's nobody I'm working with here. I'm, I'm well, I walk away. I come back and what the hell is I working on? Write it down and um, apologize for shaking the camera. Um, and that's it. So. That's it in a nutshell, O2 sensor fixed the problem. The coolant temp sensor, we don't know yet because I can't duplicate it and I'm not gonna throw parts at it. It's possible he got this thing really hot. I did put the radiator in it. No, I didn't I didn't film that for content, it's just a radiator. Maybe I should have, I don't know. It wasn't that big of a deal. Um, that's it, I'm gonna drive this thing around, make sure all the air is purged out of the system. We don't trip the light again. And if we do, I'll, I'll, keep, I'll bring you guys along again, but uh, that's really it. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, I always encourage constructive comments and discussion in the comment section. Uh, if you like it, click on the subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Uh, I will follow up with another video on that uh, that mini ductor, which is a phenomenal tool. Uh, and that's what I used to get that O2 sensor out. And um, that's it. I hope everybody's having a great day. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. Uh, be well.